Hundreds of potential jurors were packed in a South Georgia courthouse as jury selection began for the three white men accused of murdering Ahmaud Arbery. Courthouse. Superior Court Judge Timothy uh, Wamsley heard more motions and instructed the potential jurors. And we'll make sure that you shall give true answers to all questions as the classes. Number 20. Is there personally no Greg McMichael? He's seated over there next to Laura Hogue. Anyone know Greg McMichael personally? No cards. Does anyone know Travis McMichael? See it right here. Does anyone know him personally? No cards. Does anyone know William? He goes by the nickname Roddy Bryan. He's sitting down there. Anyone know Mr. Bryan? All right. All right. You've seen the three gentlemen who are in the indictment. Do they look familiar to you? You might not know them personally, but you're looking at them going, yeah, I think I might know him from somewhere I don't know. Anybody feel they are familiar? Number 25. Would they be from TV anywhere? Yeah. <laughs> Actually, no. I'm, I'm the case is similar to the murder of another unarmed yes. young black man. Understand that this case is eerily similar to that of Trayvon Martin. Another young African American who was uh, shot and killed by a citizen. Uh, the difference between Trayvon Martin and Ahmaud Arbery is there's video in Ahmaud Arbery, and we expect full justice Amen. for Ahmaud Arbery. Yeah. 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 It could take two weeks or longer to see, seat a jury of 12 with four alternates to hear the case. 1,000 jury notices were mailed out to potential jurors. Let's discuss this with my pound, Dr. Omakongo Dabinga, professorial lecturer, School of International Service at American University, Georgia Ford, uh, independent journalist, Demario Simon, Solomon Simmons, a civil rights attorney, founder of Justice for Greenwood. Demario, I'm gonna start with you. Uh, this is uh, obviously going to be a trial that many people are going to be paying attention to. They'll be, look, they'll be examining every aspect of this. Uh, and there was so much that happened uh, in this particular uh, case here, it even got us to this point. Yeah, no question. Thanks, Roland, for having me on once again. I'm good to, glad to see so many of my friends and people I work with, like Ben and Barbara Arwan down there in Georgia, representing and supporting the family of Maude Arbery. You know, this is going to be a tough case, even though we've seen video, we've seen other cases where video has been very clear and we still didn't get a, a conviction. But I'm very pleased to see down there that they got rid of the DA who was involved in this conspiracy to cover up the crime of the murder of Ahmaud Arbery. I've been involved in jury selections many, many times. This is not going to be an easy opportunity to find a, an impartial jury because everyone, it's a small town, everyone has heard about this case. But if they put on the evidence the way they should and the way the judge has been ruling, you know, they tried to bring in Ahmaud Arbery's uh, mental issues that they said he had. They said he had some some minor criminal background, things that were completely irrelevant. But this judge has kept it out. And if they keep this on what actually happened, that these individuals accosted this young man who was unarmed and shot and killed him, uh, hopefully, and they should be uh, convicted in, in, for first-degree murder. Uh, Georgia, uh, again, we've seen uh, so many other cases, so many other stories. Uh, that, that, that we've covered. Obviously, we saw uh, the case of the officer who was who killed um, uh, George Floyd there in Minneapolis with the Walter Scott case as well. I mean, this is different because it's not involving a police officer, but it is involving someone who used to work with law enforcement, and that's part of the problem, how they frankly tried to cover this thing up to keep from bringing these folks to justice. 
Correct. Roland, I think it's very interesting that Jackie Johnson was indicted. It's the first time I've ever heard of an attorney being indicted for their role in a cover-up. So it will definitely be interesting to see what type of evidence comes forth in this trial that shows, especially with McMichael, because I believe he was the one who used to work for the attorney who allegedly or is accused of asking officers to not make any arrests. And then obviously they had to move forward with those indictments after the video evidence was brought forth. But just like in the George Floyd case, it is going to be a very grueling trial. We're going to go through weeks of having to look at different uh, video evidence um, and, and just testimony that is traumatizing for our community to continuously have to relive these narratives of our black men being hunted down and, and killed by either uh, law enforcement or other white folks in community, uh, quite frankly, who feel like they have the authority to uphold the law and take matters into their own hands. Uh, but I, I'm hopeful that, like we saw in the Derek Chauvin trial, I was one of two journalists in the courtroom when he was sentenced. I'm hopeful that they'll be able to find a jury that can bring forth justice for Ahmad's family. Uh, of course, what we saw here on Macongo, uh, as Demario said, this effort to try to um, uh, create this uh, negative portrait of Ahmad Arbery, and others are making the mistake. This is not the Ahmad Arbery trial. He is not on trial. It is the three white men who killed him. They are on trial. Uh, absolutely. And I think you, you brought up several important points already uh, that Attorney Crump also brought up, is that, number one, this is not about what police have done. This is similar to Zimmerman and Trayvon Martin, and people are so quick to try to equate this as another style police case a la George Floyd. And it's great that we're differentiating between that because that's extremely important. And then when you talk about people calling this the Ahmaud Arbery trial, we have to realize at the end of the day that this is extremely problematic in terms of what, the timing that people are using to choose to bring up information about Ahmaud Arbery because a jury has not been selected yet. They have not been uh, sequestered right now. So this information that is coming out, it's making its way to potential jurors who are going to already have this information. So I think that the defense is doing this on purpose to go off of what Demario was saying. And I think that they're really being slick about it. I'm glad that we've had a judge who's made some, some good decisions to date. I'm also a little bit concerned about the makeup of whoever was involved in that jury selection, because I think everybody who you showed in that video was white, and there was one black woman in the far corner. So that gives me a little bit of concern as well. And so, yeah, we have to make sure that people realize this is not the Ahmaud Arbery trial. These guys did not know anything about his status or probation or anything when they decided to execute him. And really, at the end of the day, it comes down to making sure that we don't let that narrative stick. You know, look, tomorrow we talk on this show a lot about voting and about voter suppression, what people have to understand, if you're not a registered voter, you don't get to be a part of jury selections. You don't get a jury notice. Yeah. The two go That's hand true. in hand. No, it absolutely goes hand in hand. And a lot of times, and I'm always advocating for this, and I'm rolling, I know you are, is a lot of times our people will get a jury, jury notice and they say, hey, get me out of jury duty. I get that call all the time from my friends or professionals, and I'm saying, no, we need to show up because it makes a big difference to have just one black face in the jury room. It makes a big difference on the deliberations and what may happen. And that's why it's important for us to be involved in every step of the political process, registering to vote, voting, and showing up when it's our time to do our duty. Well, is the point there, um, uh, Georgia, that, that we keep emphasizing that. Uh, and yeah, folks, oh my goodness, here comes a jury, but then a jury notice, a jury summons, but then they complain when something happens. Yeah, well, I'm not sure if you still have my audio here, but... Yeah, we, we, yeah, uh, we, yeah, we got you. We got your audio. Even in uh, the uh, Derek Chauvin trial, you know, there were weeks of jury selection, and you had folks who were uh, trying to wiggle their way out of it, but also just even the process, right? The, the jury selection process we saw in that trial, and I'm pointing to that trial, I know that there are some major differences. But just to point to the jury selection process, that was the first time America really got to see 
just how uh, that that process can be discriminatory. I mean, there was a woman who uh, spoke Spanish, and they put her on the chopping block so quick and basically said she was incompetent just because English wasn't her, her primary uh, language, right? Uh, that shouldn't be the reason why somebody is disqualified. And so as we look at, at these trials more and more, um, as they're televised and more visible across our country, we also need to be examining the process in which jurors are selected so that we can have an inclusive process that allows everybody a chance to uh, sit on that jury and and ultimately decide, uh, you know, and, and I mean, think about how critical that role is uh, to our citizenship. Well, again, it's, 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 it's the thing is trying to get people to understand uh, the, the, why all of these things are connected. We talk about connecting the dots. And so uh, voting and voter registration is tied directly to a number of issues, who we elect as DAs, who we elect as, who we elect as judges, but also who gets these jury summons. And so that's why we emphasize this a whole lot. We're trying to get our people to understand that. Folks, back to our Gold Mark Unfiltered video in just one moment. Betty is saving big holiday shopping at Amazon. So now she's free to become Bear Hug Betty. Settle in, kids. You'll be there a while. Ooh, where are you going? Time to be smart. Roland Martin's doing this every day. Oh, no punches! Thank you, Roland Martin, for always giving voice to the issues. Look for Roland Martin in the whirlwind, to quote Marcus Garvey again. The video looks phenomenal, so I'm really excited to see it on my big screen. Support this man, Black Media. He makes sure that our stories are told. See, this difference between Black Star Network and Black-owned media and something like CNN. I gotta defer to the brilliance of Dr. Carr and to the brilliance of the Black Star Network. I am rolling with rolling all the way. Honored to be on a show that you own, a Black man <laughs> owns the show. Folks, Black Star Network is here. I'm real uh, revolutionary right now. Wow. Rolling was amazing on that. Hey, Black, I love y'all. I can't commend you enough about this platform that you've created for us to be able to share who we are, what we're doing in the world, and the impact that we're having. Let's be smart. Bring your eyeballs home. You can't be black on media and be scared. You dig?